It's Saturday night. That means it's time for the Don Tony Show. The wait all week long is finally over. Get Don Tony's perspective on current affairs in the world of pro wrestling and much more. The Don Tony Show. And now your host, the man, the legend, Don Tony. The boss is back. The boss is back. Not me. I know I'm the boss. I never left you. Remember, uh, we're talking about this guy. I'm back. No, that that, that was not good. Uh, this is better. <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> that's what that's what Triple H said at the performance center. He walked through that door and told staff personnel wrestlers <laughs> i'm back i'm back <laughs> glad to see that triple h is feeling stronger and not only that the doctors gave him the okay to uh go back to work now it will be a much stressful environment for triple h you know this is going to be a lifelong issue with him let's dispel the rumors, the claims, the hopes right away. NXT Black and Gold is not returning. Sure, Triple H will take on some duties in NXT, no question. He will uh, focus on that, what, N NIL program? I almost said NIT. You know, Triple H has a lot of things going on. And as you heard over the weekend, Stephanie McMahon had uh, not one meeting, but three meetings. Only one was reported online because everybody cuts and pastes. Oh, wait till I show you something in a moment. But um, she had three meetings, one with uh, office, one with the talent, and one with the, shit, with the uh, board of directors. Uh, I know there was some people that said, oh, Stephanie, it's just optics. It's not the case. Of course, Vince McMahon is still calling a lot of the shots. There's no question. Uh, but Stephanie McMahon taking on a much larger role than people realize. And look, when you over look at the overall stock for the week, you know, they only had about a 4 or 5% decline. Um, you know, I will say this, and this is why, you know, I don't pay attention to the sites that try to sensationalize the stock. They don't pay attention to the overall economy in the United States. It's funny that WWE stock will go down two, three dollars in a day, but they don't think, wait, the overall stock market, Dow Jones went down 900 points. You think that there might be a little correlation there? So, you know, they, they, it's selective journalism, everyone. So tonight we're going to give you some news about someone who was pulled for Forbidden Door due to a fever. Not a huge story, but something that we have to uh, address. Um, we'll talk a little bit about SmackDown Rampage, the horrendous, horrendous build to blood and guts. Um, but you know what? I want to open up with, with this. You know, oh, and later on, I will give you an exclusive here as far as this attorney that requested to be taken off the case of Tammy Sitch. I'm going to give you some exclusive information here that you're not going to read anywhere else because I got it straight from uh, the source itself. Uh, we'll get into that a little bit later. Also, Charlotte, you know, a lot of people are reporting that she is uh, returning in August, advertised for shows in August. Uh, she is returning a lot sooner than that. So you heard it here. And we'll get into a few other things. The Viking Raiders making their return, uh, different attitude, uh, added face paint. Yeah, I kind of dug last night. We got a few other little tidbits. Going to try to make the show as quickly as possible tonight because I know tomorrow we got another fucking marathon with AEW, New Japan, Forbidden Door. Uh, no disrespect intended. I can't wait until this event is over. I can't wait. I Look, I literally put this banner up earlier. Post-show review in 60 minutes. 
not only am I going to be physically and emotionally exhausted after watching this event, but, you know, I think a lot of you out there as well. And um, look, Rampage, the rating that is projected to come in is horrendous once again. You know, this is two weeks in a row now that they're back in their time slot. And it is proven, it is proven that the casual everyday wrestling fan, with all due respect, doesn't give a shit about New Japan wrestlers yet, yet. There is a curiosity factor with a few. You know, if you think that the majority of U.S. wrestling fans have watched Okada, you know, I got a bridge that I want to sell you. I always say Okada is one of the top 10, if not top five wrestlers in the world for the last decade. There's no question of his ability. But uh, as far as a household name in the United States, other than reading him, his name for years and years and years, let's be a little bit fucking honest here, you know? Plus, if you think that I was bullshitting the other day, because we were talking about the fan reaction to when Okada came out. You look at that instant reaction when wrestlers are running down the rampway or music is queued up that fans have not heard of before, they flashed the crowd and we showed you those faces and they would look shocked and surprised. And we're, we're supposed to believe that 95% of that audience knew that that was Okada. Once he came out there, there was no reaction whatsoever. And then because the AEW fans are very respectful, they know what is happening this weekend. They know that big names that we may not want to watch on an everyday basis or even want to watch on a monthly basis here in the United States, they're going to be there. So they show respect. Believe me, if that was in the ECW arena and some dumb fuck from Japan showed up that we had never seen before, I guarantee you, if it was looked at as a big name and the wrestlers in the ring were acting shock and surprised and like acting like, we would all go, holy shit. Holy shit. Holy shit. It was after a bunch of fans that started to chant. Everybody started chanting it. We were talking about it on Rampage yesterday. Rampage. Look at the end of Rampage. We were watching wrestlers coming out, surprises coming out, New Japan, All Japan, None Japan. I don't speak Japan. AEW wrestlers. And the fans are like this. The fans are like this. I watched indie. I think my fucking brawl on that indie wrestling event was more fun than what we watched. I say these were people winded. These were people that were just randomly going up to people. Oh, I'm supposed to hate you. Boom. You watch that in slow motion. And you realize how awful that was yesterday. Dynamite's end was awful. Yesterday it was, was just as bad. So I'm going to enjoy this pay-per-view. The work rate is going to be phenomenal. But I am uh, a sports entertainment fan as well. And unless I am emotionally invested in the wrestlers in the ring, if I want to see beautiful Broadway performances, I'll go to Off-Broadway. Why do you think so many people go to Broadway and they don't go to Off-Broadway? Off-Broadway, when I used to go as the guest of Steven DeAngelis, I was amazed at how awesome these actors and actresses were. But they weren't household names. And you have this many people that would show up. This is why they're off Broadway. If it's not name recognition, star value, if I'm not invested in the wrestler, AEW did nothing over the last month to tell us why we should give a shit about these wrestlers. Why? Because Eddie Kingston is te teaming up with, I don't know, she, that I'm supposed to give a shit? No, there should have been a lot more and just like, hey, I'm going to team up with blah, 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 blah. Oh, oh. And then Excalibur. I am a huge fan of Excalibur. Yesterday in a watch party, we had a friendly debate about Excalibur. I'm a fan of Excaliburs. But this repetition that when someone hits the ring, you know, one thing that we don't like as wrestling fans is that one scumbag brainchild Rain Man wrestling fan who sits at home, watches everything, reads everything, knows every single person out there, and you and I could be at a barbecue watching some bullshit wrestling event, and then all of a sudden you see some wrestlers come out that we really don't, don't pay attention to, never saw before, and he's like, are you kidding me? That is Josh blah, 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 blah. 
You know, and would be like, like, like thrown in your face, like we're supposed to know. That's the attitude, not intentional, but that's the attitude, the aura, the perception that Excalibur has thrown to American wrestling fans over the last month. When someone would come out, I know who that is. That's the great Okan, New Japan. He knew his height, weight, how many times he fucks in a week. I mean, every time somebody came out and somebody brought up yesterday how he pre prematurely ejaculated on a Malachi Black name before we even knew what his name was going to be. Oh, that's Malachi Black. So this has been horrendous. And if you think I'm making it up, don't believe me. Do a simple Google search. This is blood and guts of, you know, the past. The pinnacle versus the... Uh, Jericho, oh my God, I, I'm the inner circle. Wow, so quickly we forget. The pinnacle versus the inner circle. Look how that was built. Look how that was built. Guys, gals, I invite you right now. Go on Google, type in Blood and Guts 2022. I'm even telling you to put in the name so it narrows your search. Go on Google. Type in Blood and Guts 2022, and then click Images. 99.9% .9 of the results that come up are Blood and Guts from the past. There has been no build for this whatsoever. And guess what? Guess what? We figured out why Tony Khan didn't wait a week. You would think, okay, New Japan out the way, out, out the way, it's a rap song, out the way. Uh, John Moxley, interim champion. You have a few ramifications come out of Forbidden Door. Who knows what's going to happen with MJF in the very near future. You give it a week. You have one episode of Dynamite, one episode of Rampage, where everybody's like, oh, thank you. You know, nothing against Japanese wrestling, but don't force it on me. You know, don't force all the fucking programming on me. Blame it on the NHL, blame it on the NBA, blame it on, the, blame it on whatever the fuck you want. Lowest ratings prior to CM Punk joining him, prior to John Moxley joining, uh, excuse me, uh, Brian Danielson joining him, prior to Adam Cole, Keith Lee, and you could go down the line, the ratings are worse. They were close to NXT levels. NXT with Wendy Chu, who I want to be Chupian soon. Not champion, but Chupian. Uh, I know, not good. But the point is, you think you'd wait a week and put all the focus, okay, and New Japan's out of the way, put all the focus now on blood and guts. And no, we're getting it three days after New Japan. You know why? Because Tony Khan is afraid. Look, I'm making an opinion here. Tony Khan is afraid that if he waits a week to build up blood and guts, that the rating following New Japan may suck and suck bad. So we got to hype up uh, a name, Rage in the Cage, uh, Quake by the Lake, Schmuck by the Duck. Everything's got to be, you know, lying with a rhyme. You know, everything's got to be a catchy thing. You know, so that's why he did Blood and Guts with no build whatsoever. None. Zero. If what we got at the end of Dynamite and what we got at the end of the Rampage is supposed to be a build for blood and guts, save it. Save it. Not interested in it whatsoever. So this is why we're doing the review in 60 tomorrow. I don't give a shit if there's 95 matches on there. I'll come up there and I'll say, who that lost? QT Marshall lost. Keith Lee and Swerve Strickland won. Blah, 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 blah. I'm not going to sit there and go, oh, Keith Lee with the pounce and this and that. No. This person won. This person lost. Good match, bad match. Took a shit match. Holy shit match. And then it's up to you if you want to watch it. Now, I know I was going to originally open up with some hardcore clickbaiting that a lot of wrestling news sites are giving you right now. And look, if I am wrong on this one, I owe a huge apology to the Gerwick.nets, to the 411 Wrestlings, to the PW Insiders, can't believe I'm saying that. I don't think I'm wrong. I'm going to show you something that is going to knock your socks off. Oh, they're clickbaiting you bad right now, and you don't even realize it. But let's talk about a name 
that is, look, he is a well-known wrestler, no question whatsoever. Um, you know, a lot of you may not be aware, but, uh, you know, Hiromu Takahashi is off of New Japan. Get that tongue out of your mouth. You don't know where that tongue has been. I Googled for some nice pictures of Takahashi. Every single one. Even some that he had stuffed animals. He had stuffed animals. How old are you? Anyway, he had that tongue out of his mouth, maybe a little bit too long, maybe got a little bit of a germ. He is off Forbidden Door. He's got a fever. Oh, wrestlers never wrestled with a fever before. I know what you're going to say. Well, we're Don Tony. We're in the COVID era. You're absolutely right. Even though he has a fever. As far as we know, as of this moment, he is not positive for COVID-19. I want to make that clear. He is in Japan. I want to make that clear. Because a lot of people didn't read the articles floating around and they think, oh my God, is the AEW staff or the wrestlers being tested for COVID? You know, unless he hung out with a bunch of these guys, you know, in the last day or two in Japan, then that's different. But he's still in Japan. Now, we send absolutely, I mean this all jokes aside, we send nothing but get well wishes to Takahashi. But for those that out there that aren't aware of Japanese protocol with travel, this is why I always try to take the extra step for everyone so you understand this. If you have a fever and you show up at an airport in Japan and your fever is above 99.5, you are not allowed to travel. So this isn't a case that he just had a little fever and he didn't feel all that great and they decided to just stay home. No, you have a fever, you're not allowed to travel. That's why Takahashi is still in Japan. So he was part of the six-man match, the dudes with attitudes versus the Bullet Club. So now, instead, um, we're going to have El Fantasmo teaming up with the Young Bucks against Sting, Darby Allen, and Takaji. Oh, and by the way, Hikuleo, Hikuleya. That's Bamboleo. Hikuleo. He will be in the corner of the Bullet Club. The man who I thought was going to get pinned out of all of this, he's not even going to be in the match. Hikuleo, Hikuleya. Blah, 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 blah. So, there's your New Japan news. Just what, you know what was funny? A couple of things. First of all, we were commenting on Wednesday like, oh, wow, double or nothing. They had 50 wrestlers on the card. Overkill, 50 fucking wrestlers. We counted up the number of people for Forbidden Door. We're like, okay, it's not all that bad. You know, we could take it. You know, still a lot of people on the card. And then yesterday on fucking Rampage, they announced that we're going to get QT Marshall and Aaron Solo versus Hiroki Goto and Yoshihashi. The fuck wants to see this? The buy-in? The fuck out of here. And then, you know, Keith Lee, Swerve Strickland, one of the top tag teams, so fucking awesome. Oh, they got to be regulated to the buy-in. They're going to take on El Desperado and Yoshinabu. Kanemaru. Believe it or not, that actually that match. I smell bacon. Bacon! You cook it bacon? I smell bacon, hardcore bacon, like really like strong bacon. I'm not kidding either. Um, so Keith Lee and Swerve Strickland are gonna be wrestling, but they're gonna be wrestling in the buy-in tomorrow. So now you add another what, four uh, eight people to the card. Now we're back beyond double or nothing levels. Unbelievable, man. Unbelievable. So this is going to be another one of those, everybody. Another thing, just random, I got a real kick out of. Two weeks ago, we were having a lot of fun talking about this. 
Tully Blanchard Enterprises. I hope, look, it might just be coincidence. Remember that thumbnail that we laughed about Jay Lethal being ranked number three? And we ex- just ha- we did a whole episode exposing that ranking system. Not only was Jay Lethal out of the top five within two weeks, but AEW revamped the whole ra- ranking system. We've talked, you remember when uh, we talked about Jay Lethal early on that he was absent from TV, Leo Rush uh, and others, and then suddenly a week later they appear? Two weeks ago, we had so much fun talking about the fact that these motherfuckers haven't been active since April 1st. April 1st. And we said Ring of Honor is a dead promotion right now. I hate to break it to everyone. It is not active. There is no touring. There is no shows. There is no regular TV. This is Tony Khan who bought the fucking promotion and is taking the titles and throwing it on his TV because he was a hardcore Ring of Honor fan back in the day. He was a hardcore New Japan fan back in the day. And because he has this platform called All Elite Wrestling, I'm going to put the belts on my show. So Ring of Honor is still alive. So now we're talking about these guys, and look what miraculously happened yesterday. Oh, my God. They showed up in a promo, and Jonathan Gresham and I think Lee Moriarty are going to challenge these guys. And all they talked about was Ring of Honor, 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 Ring of Honor. Keep, Keep doing it, Tony. Keep doing it, Tony. Please you first, please niche audience second, please AEW hardcore fans third, please casual wrestling fans four. Keep doing that formula. Keep doing that formula. But I found that hilarious because two weeks ago, we were, we were the only show that were talking about Tully Blanchard and what the fuck happened? And yesterday they got two segments, not one, but two. I thought that was great. But hey, awesome to see Brian Cage finally get a little fucking TV time again. And nice to see Tully Blanchard back. But please, all this Ring of Honor. I don't hate Ring of Honor. The only time I ever disliked Ring of Honor was way back when they were fucking with XPW and what they did to Boogaloo and Lowrider. I sat in that Baldwin house and seeing one of these guys, look, I'm just trying to make some money for my for me and my family. And Ring of Honor basically telling them, you work for XPW, you don't work anywhere else, cocksuckers. LOL. I don't hold a grudge. I don't, I mean, it's water under the bridge. But, you know, everybody thinks that these people are so, you know, like proper and good and genuine and they're not like the evil McMahons. Well, maybe not to that level. First of all, if you looked with all due respect, maybe Feinstein is the only one that looked, would, would anybody really fuck Gabe Sapolsky? I mean, look, I, I like the guy now. You look back then, you look at his face. It looks like a bad cartoon that somebody put it in a vice. And instead of it being like round like a basketball, it's like this. It's like this. You remember, was that puppet that had like the giant chin? I can't remember who it is. I'm trying to make people laugh. Gabe, please don't get mad at me. I'm sorry it was at your expense. Here, look, I got tits. All right, so we're even now. We're even now. By the way, Roosh made an appearance yesterday. Is it just me or if Deacon Batista fucked a Latino prostitute and gave birth to a child, it would have gave birth to Roosh? Tell me Roosh does not look like Deacon Batista back in the day. All we need is Devon with the collector's box. I saw that yesterday. I'm like, that's Deacon Batista. That's a Latino version of Deacon Batista. Instead of him having a collection box, I don't know. Look, look, he looks like Deacon Batista. I know, I know. You get a little, I, I've lo- loosened up a little bit, obviously. You know, I, some people say, oh, DT, you've gotten too politically correct. No, I've grown up a little bit. But you know what? You, know, you got health issues. I'm dealing with this prostate cancer shit now. I'm getting married in two months. My mother and my father are not doing that great. And I'm going to care about drama in this world. Seriously. So we have fun, no malicious intent. I love everybody out there. I even love my enemies. Seriously, let's just have some laughs and have some fun. 
you know, yesterday on SmackDown, I thought this was such a funny thing to do just to put la laughs on people's faces, but because it's us that come up with it, no one, no one from the Cool Kids Club would ever acknowledge it. Yesterday on SmackDown, the Maximum Male Models did not appear once again. And they're teasing it definitely for next week. And I'm looking at that. And I'm saying to myself, that has got to be a meme. That has got to be Photoshopped. During the watch party yesterday, my first thought was, okay, maybe Captain Kirk is fucking with the maximum male models. Maybe he's in the transporter room and he's not allowing them to show up and he's trying to beam them in a different area. And I'm like, okay, that's kind of funny. Yes, I did that myself. But you see, I got to put my logo in the corner because then someone will just steal it and then they'll get 50,000 likes to it. But I was like, no, that's not good enough. I got to come up with something better. And it freaking hit me. And it's, it's sad to see that people out there, because it's us trying to give everybody some laughs, do a little self-promotion as well, everybody from the Cool Kids Club, they'll ignore it until someone else will come up with a different variation. They'll be like, <laughs> I fucking saw that and it hit me. Tell me, that's, tell me that's not Mr. Bean. Seriously. Tell me that's not Mr. Bean. I mean, look, tell me that's not Mr. Bean. Tell me you can't picture like Mr. Bean being in the middle of the goddamn ring and he gets up. Tell me that's not the intro of Mr. Bean. Come on. You got to give it to me. I thought of that yesterday. I'm like, that's fucking Mr. Bean. If I had the talent of splicing in like video with still shots in the background, I would have last night after the show I, to the watch party, I would have have him fly down into the WWE ring. The only problem is I thought about it. I'm like, okay, some douchebags out there going to say, oh, after Owen Hart fell in the ring, now you're showing Mr. Bean falling in the ring? Yeah, I believe there's fucking twisted people out there that would make the correlation. So you have to deal with st still shots instead. By the way, could someone please tell me if this is fake or not? John Cena is going to be on Raw Monday celebrating 20 years since his WWE debut. Someone sent me this photo. When the hell did John Cena have long hair like this? Does anybody remember this? Because I watched John Cena's entire career. I do not recall this man having long hair like that on the main roster. It's got to be fake, right? Yes, that's got to be fake. Somebody sent it to me. And I'm like, no, that's, there's something wrong with this picture. There is definitely something wrong with this picture. All right, thank you. I had a feeling it was fake. What's not fake, what's not fake, segueing into a lot, really getting this show going. It's, I, I kind of like being a little bit messy with the show and just go wherever. That's what I used to do. And that's why I stopped timestamps because I like going in different areas and sometimes going back, you know, but... You know, there's another anniversary coming up. I can't believe nobody's talking about it. You know, John Cena's 20-year anniversary from his WWE debut is this Monday. 20 years ago, we saw him with Kurt Angle. Ruthless aggression. You know, July 25th is the 20-year anniversary of Rey Mysterio's debut in WWE. 20 years ago, July 25th, he faced Chavo Guerrero Jr. on SmackDown. Are we getting a 20-year anniversary celebration for Ray Ray? I mean, yes, he was gone for WWE for a few moments. That doesn't take away the fact, that doesn't take away the fact that he debuted 20 years ago. 20 years ago is 20 years ago. So I'm just throwing it out there. I hope WWE does a 20-year celebration for Rey Mysterio as well. Maybe they're just waiting to get through Monday. Right now, they want all the 20-year focus on John Cena. And once they get through Monday, then 
maybe they'll start talking about Rey Mysterio. I would think they have to bring it up. They have to bring it up. Let's just hope it's not like ruined by Veer. I like Veer Mahan, man, but move on with this shit. Move on. I don't know. I don't know. All right. I know I didn't show you the clickbait news yet. Yet. We'll get to it. Let's close Takahashi. Let's close Blood and Guts because we already talked about that. Let's briefly, 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 briefly talk about SmackDown. And I'm just going to get into a couple of tidbits from SmackDown that I think are important. A couple of things that caught my eye. Out of everything that happened on SmackDown yesterday, look, Drew McIntyre and Sheamus, you know, people still, I mean, you would think after 15, 20 years of WWE doing this shit on TV, that people still, you know, it's amazing that they can't figure it out. WWE, you can go like, okay, all right. Picture this. It sounds like the beginning of the Twilight Zone. Picture this. All right, picture this. You're in front of your house. You're in front of your house. And you're standing in the middle of the street. And you could see, like, five blocks straight ahead. Straight line. Five blocks. Ten, uh, ten blocks. Okay. Six blocks. We'll go six blocks. You're standing in the middle of the street. You look six blocks ahead. And you see McDonald's. Mmm. French fries. McDonald's. All right. I'm going to go to McDonald's. I'm going to get me some McDonald's. Now, you can go straight ahead, just straight, follow the big yellow M, and you got your McDonald's. And then, you know, you're maybe with your friends, your significant other, kids, and you want to torment them a little bit. You know what? I'm not going to go straight to the McDonald's. I'll make a right at the end of the block. I'll drive three blocks this way. I'll make another left, go two blocks this way. You take the scenic route. You could have just gone straight, right to it. You know, you know I want to take a little extra route. That's what they did yesterday. They do that, not every week. Just because they don't do it every week doesn't mean they don't do it. The beginning of the show, I'm seeing all these whiny heinies out there. Ah, uh, they announced... Seamus, they announce Drew, and then they take them off, and then they do a match. Because they're trying to fill up the fucking two hours. They're trying to fill it up. They don't want to just make the announcement, because last week, last week, the same whiny heinies. Oh, why did Seamus and Drew automatically get in the match? They didn't even wrestle a qualifier. Why are they in? So fucking stupid. Lazy booking. I'm not making fun of Cornette, but everybody else thinks because Cornette says it, they could say it. You know, that's what last week. Okay, this week. Hey, Drew. You know, hey, uh, Paul Heyman brought it to Adam Pierce's attention, and WWE officials overruled Adam Pierce. So Seamus and Drew are not in Money in the Bank. But they could go back in if they win a tag team match against the Usos. You know what the outcome is going to be. This is WWE getting an extra match out of it and trying to extend the storyline of Drew being in Money in the Bank, Sheamus being in the Money in the Bank. And I got news for you. I got news for you. Roman Reigns... Let's do it camera level so you can see. Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar are up here. There's no question. Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar are up here. Cody Rhodes, fair. Cody Rhodes, Drew McIntyre, Seth Rollins, maybe Bobby Lashley. And I'm leaving a bunch of people out as well. I don't know if people are realizing it, but... Even though we may be crapping on some of their creative, they got like seven guys right now. Riddle might be the weak link out of all of them. Riddle, Randy Orton, Cody Rhodes, Drew McIntyre, Seth Rollins, Bobby Lashley, 
And we could probably add a few other people if utilized the right way. AJ Styles, Finn Balor, if they could get him back to the next level. You got seven, eight guys that could arguably fight for the heavyweight title. It's pretty, pretty good. Yes, Rock and Roman are here, but a lot of those guys are right here. I think when you look at it like that, you're not doing a bad job. And who knows what Sami Zayn? I threw out yesterday an idea. You know, and I, this is why I don't like tweeting all that much. You know, I tweet sometimes to socialize, to, you know, bounce ideas off of people. But you know the deal. I said yesterday, I said, okay, my mind was racing a little bit. I got an idea. Yesterday, he was fighting Shinsuke Nakamura, Money in a Bank qualifier. On a watch party, when the match started, I said, wow, I just thought of an idea. I said, what if Sami Zayn won Money in a Bank and then Roman Reigns, because he wants to be in the bloodline so bad, Roman Reigns, Paul Heyman, the Usos, they tell Sami Zayn, if you really want to be in the bloodline, win the briefcase and sacrifice it. Give it to us. Give the briefcase to Roman Reigns. If you want to be in the bloodline, win that briefcase, and give it over to the bloodline, and you will be officially a member of the bloodline. Yeah, it fucks up the suspense of the briefcase because, again, you want to see people running down the aisle. Not every single week, but you want surprises. You want to be teased. You want to, you know, get a little bit of pro wrestling blue balls. That should be a website, prowrestlingblueballs.com. You know, you like somebody coming down there teasing that they're going to cash in. Doink the Clown could add the freaking briefcase. And if he teases it, give it to the referee. People are like, oh, he's going to cash it in. He's going to cash it in. And then somebody kicks him in the head. And then we have to wait extra weeks. People like that element of surprise. Why do you think when we talked about Ortiz, hair versus hair with Chris Jericho, Chris Jericho's got the Jericho Appreciation Planet all in his corner, and Ortiz has just got Eddie Kingston because Santana, I guess, was at the churro truck. Or maybe there was uh, a pizza, pizza guy outside. Maybe he was getting an Amazon fresh delivery. But no, no, because Tony Khan is like, oh, no, the fans will pop if he runs down the rampway later on. Doesn't explain, like, why the fuck was it? And why is Yuta Michinoku running down with him? He's part of the Bloodhound gang, you know? But no, if somebody runs out there, every single match, somebody runs out there. Latino Batista runs out there yesterday. This person runs out there. So that's why they do this. But what if Sami Zayn won the briefcase, gave it to the bloodline, officially gives it to Roman Reigns. Now he thinks he's in the bloodline, and Roman beats the fuck out of Sami Zayn. Totally destroys him. Sami Zayn, suddenly a baby face. Sami Zayn, maybe to that level. Just an idea I threw out there yesterday. Nobody responded. Daniel Garcia. Yesterday on Rampage yesterday, Jericho was awfully curious who Brian Danielson's newest Blackpool member. Yes, they're doing blood and guts. But Jericho wasn't mentioning blood and guts when the match. Who the fuck does Jericho care who's facing Zack Sabre Jr.? If you're going to bring it up in storyline with blood and guts, say, I want to know who this latest member is going to be. I'm going to kick his ass at blood and guts. No, it was about let's hype up New Japan. Let's hype up Forbidden Door. Let's hype up Forbidden Door. Jericho, who the fuck do you care that Zack Sabre Jr. is fighting? Bring up blood and guts. So I said, maybe Daniel Garcia, he's not on the show. Maybe Daniel Garcia ends up being that guy. And then, holy shit, Jericho appreciations. And people are like, but then they'll be minus one. They'll fucking grab somebody in the back. 
Someone will show up. Maybe Fuego shows up. But I'm just throwing ideas out there and not even a response. I hope both of them fucking happen. I hope Sammy wins that briefcase. I hope he hands it over to Roman, gets his ass kicked. I'm just going to sit back here and go like, this like when the whole week in the teaser, I said Carmella's returning as quickly, as soon as Monday's Raw. And then I wrote on Twitter, and yes, I tweeted and deleted and should have never tweeted and deleted. I said, you know what? I hope Carmella appears on Raw this Monday night, and I hope she fucking wins and goes on to face Bianca Belair at Money in the Bank. And then I deleted it. I'm like, nah, I don't want to come across as a dick on social media. And what the fuck happens? Carmella shows up and she wins and she goes on there. So it's like, you know what? I don't give a shit anymore. I don't care whose feathers I ruffle. We'll just fucking throw the shit out there. So, all right. So Drew McIntyre and Sheamus beat the Usos. They're in Money in the Bank anyway. And by the way, I cannot get enough of, I know I'm late saying this, but I just can't get enough of when Paul Heyman has to emphasize the Z in Roman Reigns' name. Roman Reigns. Z. Roman, I did that to my fiance yesterday. What'd you think of Roman Reigns? She's like, what the fuck are you doing? I'm like, nothing. What, did you see Raw, not SmackDown? Did you see the T's in Roman Reigns? Roman Reigns. I love when he does that. By the way, stupid storyline yesterday when Adam Pierce revealed that management overrid him. Why did Seamus call him a spineless goof? You, you're spineless. Uh, WWE, a little storyline continuity. Why is he spineless if he actually put Seamus in the match and management overrid him? Go back and you watch that segment and say, listen to sh That's what happens when WWE forces wrestlers to have certain scripted responses. It made zero sense in the storyline. So Sami Zayn advances. And, you know, little storyline telling as well. Sami Zayn said that if he wins the briefcase, he's not going to cash it in on Roman Reigns. He's doing it to protect him. And then later on in the night, Sami Zayn insinuated that if he wins, he'll cash in on Brock Lesnar. So he thinks Brock Lesnar is going to win at SummerSlam? Kind of gave a little friction there with uh, Paul Heyman. I'm telling you, I hope he wins that briefcase. I hope he hands it to Rome. I hope that shit happens, seriously. Shanky and Jinder Mahal doing the Shanky Panky. We got a dance-off with the New Day. And uh, Shanky pissed it off Jinder Mahal. I can't do it. I have to watch it. You know. Anyway, he's dancing. And as he's dancing, you watch Xavier Woods just very nonchalantly take the trombone and put it outside the ring. So you know somebody's going to attack them from behind. And lo and behold, the Viking Raiders show up. New attitude, some new face paint. They beat the crap out of the New Day. They beat up Shanky Panky. And now they are back. They are back. They showed up on SmackDown. I'm back. All right. I think we'll let that video clip retire. We don't have to do it anymore. Uh, look, he'll turn, good, good. You've heard this show for quite some time. We said, turn him heel or turn him loose. That might actually be interpreted as the same thing, but no, release him or turn him heel. You got to do something. So, you know, fine. We'll see where it goes. But they showed back up yesterday. They'll be feuding with the New Day. All right, fine. Something a little different. Okay, so they showed up yesterday. Pat McAfee calling out Happy Corbin for SummerSlam. They did a little social media exchange online as well. That match is pretty much set for SummerSlam. Pat McAfee, WWE uh, approached him to see if he wanted to wrestle for arguably the second biggest event of the year. He did spectacular WrestleMania. Um, Pat McAfee, fans wanted to see them beat the shit out of Theory. 
Now he gets to beat the shit out of Happy Corbin. Who's the other mosquito that you want Pat McAfee to beat up next year? That's basically how they're utilizing him. Good. Good. I actually don't mind seeing this. We talked about maximum male models already. Uh, Gunther destroyed Ricochet. Absolutely destroyed him. I saw people losing their lunch yesterday. Like, oh my God, look what they did to Ricochet. I agree. But how's about in the same sentence? Look what they did with Gunther. Gunther is going to break a streak. That was in last week's synopsis, and I forgot to bring it up. So I'm bringing it up here now. Gunther is going to end a streak that a lot of people tuning in already know what that streak is. For those that don't, the last time the title, the Intercontinental title, was defended on a pay-per-view was WrestleMania, I believe, of last year. That's how long it's been. It's not been defended on a pay-per-view in well over a year. Might even be more than that. Shinsuke Nakamura, uh, Sami Zayn, Ricochet, everybody who held that title. Did, did Bobby Lashley hold that title too? But that title, yeah, I think Bobby Lashley might have held that title also. It has not been defended. Gunther is going to be defending that as early as SummerSlam. So, yeah, if you're going to say, look what they did to Ricochet, how's about, look what they did to Gunther. You know, that guy should be destroying people. Maybe Gunther, Gunther, sooner than later, gets up to this level. Thank you. Three years ago. So, yeah, it was the even the year before that. So it was the WrestleMania from two years ago. Big deal. Gunther's going to end that streak. Now, unfortunately, Tamina had to replace Aaliyah. Apparently something with an injury with Aaliyah. And uh, Tamina filled in. Shotzi Blackheart beat her yesterday. So Shotzi Blackheart is now in Money in the Bank. And that was pretty cool because quite a few of you, along with myself, said it looked very, very genuine, her reaction yesterday. Shotzi Blackheart, there's many days have passed since her really errant, sloppy work in NXT. She has really tightened it up in the ring and has really gotten better. And I'm happy that she got that spot. Um. I also wanted to bring up Natalia. Natalia. Natalia owned this segment yesterday. She killed it. She came out dressed like Ronda Rousey, complete with the makeup. And I don't know what people were watching yesterday. We were watching it in real time. In a watch party essay. Oh, and by the way, Monday, I will be drawing the winner of the two signed photos from yesterday. I want to thank certain someone in AEW. Yes, somebody in AEW actually sent me a couple of prizes to give away on these shows. This is a CM Punk autographed AEW photo. And I also got this Sting AEW autograph photo. Sent me a couple, so I really appreciate that. Pretty awesome, man. I like, you know, you complain on the shows a little bit, have a little legitimate complaint, and you, you actually get some answers. Didn't expect that. But uh, if you want to be in on some of these giveaways, you know, somebody asked me yesterday, bitch, you don't have a John Laranitis signed photo. I bet you I do. <laughs> so, yeah, this this has been in my collection. If John Laronitis, if it's proven that he was a chauvinistic pig and actually did that to his wife while she was battling brain cancer, that will be a trivia contest. That will be a giveaway in the near future. We'll give away Vince. You know what we'll give away? We'll give away a Vince McMahon, John Laronitis, 
and maybe like something to represent them. Dirt bag, old bag, scumbag. I don't know. Got to come up with something that's not too offensive, but a visual, maybe like a grumpy old men movie or something. But uh, I'm not burning nothing. I'm not burning nothing. Give it away. Give it away, man. So, um, Ronda Rousey yesterday. I don't know what people watch. I we were watching in a watch party yesterday. We thought she was awful. Maddie was a little too energetic impersonating Rhonda. But when Rhonda came out there to insult Natty, like the energy was pulled back down. And then if you go back and watch, Natty threw the baby carriage at Rhonda. And Rhonda fell like a stack of dominoes. She fell. She's fallen and she couldn't get up. She looked awful in that segment. You go back and look when she was trying to hit Natty. I don't, I don't know what the fuck is going on with her. I know that she's trying to find her groove, being out of the ring. You know, sometimes you lose it. And sometimes it's very difficult to get it back. It happens in sports too. You could have somebody... Injury usually is the cause. And look, Rhonda did have an injury, but, you know, the injury was really, you know, it's the upper body, the limbs. But, you know, in sports, someone could come into the NBA, the NFL, baseball with, a, you know, a, a spitfire. And, you know, maybe starts off a little slow, but then just finds the groove. And then injury takes them out for a year or two. And then they come back and they're never the same. But Rondi yesterday, I, I, you know what I think it is for real? And I'm being so totally sincere about Ronda Rousey, right? Because I am a big fan of Ronda Rousey. Absolutely big fan of Ronda Rousey. I think because of the UFC, Ronda, and I, I'm very curious to see how you all feel about this. Ronda, if you go back and you watch when it was Becky, Charlotte, Ronda feuding for WrestleMania, leading up to that, Ronda would get UFC angry. And what I mean by that is the anger felt real. You actually thought she was legit pissed off. And it made the segments very, very realistic. I almost feel that Ronda Rousey has this concern, maybe subconsciously, that if she has to, because look, you ever see someone in a storyline or maybe a soap opera and they just start crying. We've seen some wrestling segments where somebody will start crying. They, they're required to cry in a storyline. We've seen soap operas, movies, where somebody has to cry. And what, what is one of the ways that you try to get somebody to cry? You think of a loved one who passed away. If I sat here and thought about my dog and my grandmother long enough, I could definitely shed some tears. That's what some people do. They think of people who they have lost and just it, and that gets them to cry. With Ronda Rousey, I think getting that real anger inside to convince herself that she's really legitimately mad right now, I think that's her success portraying the character. And I think she might be afraid that she may actually start wailing on someone. I'm not saying uncontrollably. But I think Rhonda, if you go look, look at the segment yesterday when Natty threw the shot, the baby carriage and then started wailing on Ronda Rousey. Ronda Rousey looked like a pile of mush. And it looks like she is very hesitant to fight back because she may actually connect. Ronda Rousey connects. You got a problem. So Ronda yesterday, I hate to use the term, but Ronda Rousey was Ronda Lousy. That was in, Natty was the superstar in that segment yesterday. So that's pretty much the gist of SmackDown yesterday. Not a bad show at all. Not a bad show. Uh, no Roman, no Brock. 
But still, you know, we got to get used to that. We got to get used to it. When SummerSlam starts to build, Roman will be on TV quite often, as will Brock. So we got money in the bank coming up, and the star power is enough. It's enough. So Rampage yesterday, we're just going to run through this quickly. We had Cash Wheeler uh, taking on Jeff Cobb. You know, you could see this should not have been the main event. Andrade and Ray Phoenix, or as Excalibur tries to convince us, Ray Phoenix, Phoenix, 99% of the wrestling world calls him Ray Phoenix. Ray Phoenix. No, he's got, oh, that's Ray Phoenix. Phoenix. That should have main evented yesterday. That match was fire. Andrade, it was hilarious. I don't remember who picked it up on the watch party, but early on we were like, is he wearing Yankee pants? I think Andrade's bag got lost at the airport or something. I think he legitimately went to like a local sports store and bought some Yankee jersey pants, the New York Yankees. And I think Jericho later on even made a joke and he said Andrade with his Yankee pants. And they tore. You could see they were not wrestling a wrestling outfit. And yesterday in a watch party, I actually found a site that sold not only the exact pants that Andrade was wearing, but the belt. It comes with the belt. But that match was outstanding yesterday. But Jeff Cobb getting the win, in my opinion, it just sparks FTR likely to get those belts at Forbidden Door in Chicago, aligned with CM Punk, but they put Wheeler and Cobb as the main event so they could get a big fucking clusterfuck afterwards. When everybody runs out and is disarray, you get used to it. It's just like people that are not used to watching horror films, and the first time they see a gory slash picture, they have nightmares, they get scared, they're nauseous, they're afraid to walk home at night. Any little creepy sound in the house, they think somebody is breaking in, they get panic attacks. Then you watch another one. Then you watch another one. And then you watch Maniac, Zombies, Night of the Living Dead, Dawn of the Dead, Maniac, Maniac Cop, Slasher Number One, Freddy Krueger, Jason, Jason meets Michael, Jason and Michael, you know, go. Next thing you know, it doesn't bother you anymore. No big deal. You have hardcore sci-fi fans. You see all his special effects. A Rob Zombie movie. You go with someone who doesn't like scary movies. I don't watch scary movies. Oh, no. <laughs> and meanwhile, you're sitting there like, oh, come on, honey. Oh, that's not there. Come on, that's sausage. You don't remember Katie Vick? That's chopped meat. Come on, look. This is what we're getting right now with AEW. Basically, when everybody runs out and everything is a clusterfuck and the lights keep going out and this, this, and that, and this person shows up, oh my God, it's this person, then none of it is important anymore. None of it. None of it. Even if Gargano or Cesaro or if someone outside ends up debuting at Forbidden Door, even if it's epic, amazing, unbelievable, you think suddenly they're going to be that guy that is suddenly going to get a ton of TV. They're going to tape three pre-recorded segments and it'll be on Rampage three weeks in a row. You'll have five out of seven matches being on darker elevation. I mean, tell me what wrestler is out there that is suddenly going to appear on TV, wrestle every week, actually run for a title or something, and be totally different than the formula that Tony Khan has been using. Tell me, Gargano? Gar I want to see Gargano back in wrestling. I miss seeing Cesaro in wrestling, but they show up. It's like the Cracker Jack surprise. It's like the people that are addicted to Amazon. I got to get an Amazon every week. I got to get an Amazon delivery every week. I really don't want to do this, but, you know, I want to get an Amazon every week. You know, even though you don't need this bathroom set... Look, honey, a toilet scrubber. And then two days later. Go 
Gargano shows up. What do you think is going to a couple of weeks later? All right. Ah, I just fucked up a box. We had Hook beat the DKC. Put a T in there. That would have been cool. Uh, <laughs> I, I think people will figure that out. Uh, and, and that's actually a compliment. Uh, the DKC lost to Hook. Um, I don't know. There was that DKC yesterday. We were watching him throwing slaps to Hook. And um, I don't know. I can't remember the moment, but Hook was in the corner. And DK, I got styrofoam all over me now. Now, look at this. Look at this crap. We get styrofoam everywhere. DKC, look, he's a New Japan dojo guy. But Hook basically handed him his, his ass and whatever. All right. Then we also had Serena Deeb and Mercedes Martinez win a squash match. You know, it is what it is. So, but look, it's for one hour, not a bad episode of rampage we had another pre-recorded segment with squirb scott and keith lee rampage uh they show them mostly every week just to give the aura that they're on tv so um updated card for money in the bank right now on the women's side we got lacey evans oh what happened to her going on smackdown as a heel Everybody, oh, she's, she's, she's a heel. No, oh, they turn her a heel. There was only one show that said that if they do that, they're going to wait until after the 4th of July. Lacey Evans, Alexa Bliss. Oh, yeah, that's right. Lacey Evans uh, and, um, no, it was Zia Lee yesterday. Oh, I got something to show you. We had Zia Lee yesterday and, uh, hold on. I want to pull this out there. Okay, Sonya Deville. Yesterday on SmackDown, because I want to mention this, because I am a big fan of Sonya Deville. Sonya Deville is continuing the storyline that we talked about a few weeks ago, that she's very upset for losing her position in management, and she's getting very upset with Adam Pearce. We were hoping that she was going to slap Adam Pearce yesterday, but we didn't get that. Instead, we got a handicap match yesterday, and basically we got Lacey Evans, um, Raquel Rodriguez, and uh, taking on Sonya Deville. Sonya Deville comes out there with Zia Lee and Shayna Baszler as her backup, which is cool. I actually fine with that. I like that they're putting Zia Lee with somebody because without it, she is just lost in the shuffle. Um, by the way, I'll answer some questions. Cappy Caveman, I have not seen it yet, but I'll, I'll answer that in a little bit. But um, while we were watching this yesterday, all the conversation was, man, we want to see Ronda Rousey versus Shayna Baszler. Why aren't we getting Ronda Rousey versus Shayna Baszler? And look, I said this yesterday, I repeat it here. I think WWE's trying to get Ronda Rousey right. She has the title right now. She's only facing Natty at Money in the Bank because Natty will carry this match and she will bump like a motherfucker for ronda rousey she will sell she will take offense she will help ronda through this and they are very very close and ronda rousey trusts natty big time natty is there to help ronda rousey it's not about ronda rousey retaining of course she's going to retain but the idea is they got to get her to consistently have good matches. She had a great match, the first one with Raquel Rodriguez. The problem is, is that she's hit or miss Ronda Rousey, so Nanny's going to help her further. That's why I don't think they're jumping the gun yet with Shayna Baszler. But yesterday on social media, this video was posted by WWE on Twitter, where Ronda and Shayna Baszler are sitting in an empty arena talking about, you know, supporting each other. And Shayna Baszler tells Ronda Rousey that she can't get involved. 
in her feud with Natty because Shayna Baszler is close with Ronda. Shayna Baszler is close with Natty. So Shayna Baszler says that she's got to stay out of this. So right now, Shayna Baszler is playing neutral. Shayna Baszler ultimately will have to turn on her friend. Shayna Baszler in storyline wants that women's championship. So right now, Shayna Baszler playing neutral. I expect that to change in the future. Still pissed off about that box. Was it worth it? That's going to be a future giveaway. Now I got to find a box. Okay. I'm glad we brought that up because I, I wanted to mention that yesterday and with Shayna Baszler. So women's money in the bank match right now. We have Lacey Evans, Alexa Bliss, Liv Morgan, Raquel Rodriguez, Oscar, Shotzi Blackheart. One more person to be put in still. On the men's money in this bank match, we have Seth Rollins, Drew McIntyre, Sheamus, Omas, Sami Zayn. One more person to be put in that match. Bianca Belair versus Carmella for the Raw Women's Championship. Ronda Rousey versus Natalya for the SmackDown Women's Championship. The Usos versus the Street Profits uh, for the undisputed WWE Tag Titles. And Theory versus Bobby Lashley for the United States Championship. So those are your matches. Monday, uh, we'll see the go-home show for Money in the Bank. As far as the Raw side, we'll have John Cena there. We'll see if they build up anything with him in theory for SummerSlam because that is the buzz going around. Um, we'll see. it. I think Monday's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, all right. Two more things. Then we'll get some questions and we'll get out of here. First of all, actually, three more things. First of all, expect more appearances by Vince McMahon on TV. Some will be announced. Some will not be announced. Vince McMahon will continue doing this for obvious reasons. We've talked about all of them already. There's no reason for us to keep getting into them. You know what the deal is. You know what the investigation is. You know, Stephanie telling the shareholders, I mean, the, the uh, board of directors that, Look, she loves her father and she loves WWE, and, you know, and she's, but she's also going to, you know, uh, handle this, whatever the outcome is in the case. I mean, that's common sense. What is she supposed to tell the shareholders? You know, look, if he's found guilty and you have to vote, you know what to do. She's not going to do that. No one's going to do that. I don't think Vince would even want Stephanie to do that. So, this is a big deal. Look, when you see Mickey James and others making the comments that they have recently about Stephanie, they realize this is not just an optics. This is also a tryout. Because look, Vince McMahon, whether he is voted out because of his behavior or old age or senility or a maybe future health condition that we hope doesn't happen that's you know, not aware, you know, Vince is not going to be there forever. They do have to have a, some backup plans. So this is very well could be a rehearsal for what could be in the future. As far as this bullshit going around that WWE wrestlers, the staff are very concerned about Bruce Pritchard filling in for John Laurinaitis. John Laurinaitis was not fired, by the way. I know a bunch of you were asking me, what do you think about WWE firing John Laurinaitis? They didn't fire him. He took a leave of absence because of what's going on. And Bruce Pritchard is now the interim head of talent relations. Listen, you may not like Bruce Pritchard's creative side, but as far as dealing with talent, I don't know too many people that say that Bruce Pritchard is an absolute douchebag, womanizer, scumbag, asshole. Maybe he's a yes man to Vince McMahon and maybe creatively we don't like some of his work. But Bruce Pritchard, there's never any controversy around Bruce Pritchard. So Bruce Pritchard being in that position, wrestlers being worried. I mean, if anything, if anything, if Bruce Pritchard is more focused on talent relations 
less on creative. Isn't that a good thing? I know it sounds sexy, but when you actually take a step back, you realize why it doesn't make sense. Um, Tammy Sitch, okay. I told you I was going to give you some exclusive. Here's the deal. I think his name is what? Stephen Delaroche? I don't have it written down, but I remember the name. Because I always think of La 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 Roche. Yankee fans, old Yankee fans will know who I'm talking about. Dave La Roche, La 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 Roche. Uh, her attorney, Stephen De La Roche, he requested to be withdrawn as Tammy Sitch's legal counsel. I know everybody and their mother, PW Insider broke the news. No, they didn't. They read a court website. Here's the facts straight from the source. I have it here exclusively. She is the one that requested this attorney to be replaced. I'm not going to discuss what her defense is going to be. I think you could figure it out if you look at certain things that was said in the past, but her lawyer that she has, I talked about it a little bit on Patreon this week. Not because, oh, join my Patreon, you'll get exclusive news. It's just a conversation happened over there. But what I said is that this lawyer that she has now used to be a judge. He ran for office. His name is a very well-known name in Florida. But the thing is, is that this lawyer wants to go in this direction. Tammy Sitch wants to go in this direction. And when you're talking about paying six figures for an attorney, six figures is $100,000 plus. This is not a court-appointed lawyer that you don't pay for, that the state pays for, and you hope that they give you a good case. She is the one that wants a different attorney. When the attorney goes to court and files a motion to be removed from the case. The attorney doesn't say, uh, Your Honor, I request to be removed from the case because I am not wanted, that I am not welcome, that my client does not want me as a lawyer anymore. <laughs> no, that's not how it works. She is the one that wants different counsel. Now, the reason why it's taking several weeks for the court to make that motion is because she has not replaced that lawyer yet. She's got to get new counsel. Could that happen this week? Possibly. Could it happen next week? More than likely. But that is what's going on. As far as her boyfriend goes, he's not going to be criminally accused of anything. By now, the court has done their diligence on the criminal side of this, and they know in their minds what happened. There is no evidence that this guy got the vehicle so she could use it. There's no evidence to that whatsoever. But you know, just by looking at TV, I mean, back in the 90s, every other commercial, have you slipped? Have you fallen? Had, did you drink spoiled milk and had a tummy ache? Well, call the lawyers of Jacob Friedman and blah, 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 Stan, and we can represent you in a court of law. Have you been this? Have you been turned down on a date? Have you stubbed your toe? You know, have you walked down the block and not watched where you're going and you thought you tripped, but there was actually a crack in the sidewalk. You could be a millionaire. I do insurance since 1998. I can't tell you how many times lawsuits have come across my desk where somebody gets into a dumb, stupid car accident and the other person wants to sue because they can't fuck their spouse anymore. They can't get it up. I don't know, because of the accident, I, I, I snapped back and now my dick doesn't want to get hard. I swear to God, loss of consortium. I've talked about this in years past. There's lawyers that will sue everybody. So this guy was dragged into the civil lawsuit 
because the lawyers on, on behalf, look, the guy that died, it's a tragedy. And I have said a thousand times over, you know, Tammy said she, she's got to pay the piper for what she, she's got to take responsibility for it. She has to be held accountable. And I told you, I would not be surprised if she gets 15 years in jail. I'm not defending her whatsoever. I'm giving you just the information that I was given straight from the source, and I'm sharing it with you. What you do with it is totally up to you. Um, but that's the deal. That's the deal. So as far as all this exclusive news, she does not want this guy as her lawyer anymore. The question is, who do you replace him with? I don't know anything about the lawyer. I'm not going to diss him. I'm not going to say it. All I know is that he, his name is a very, very well-known name. And, you know, sometimes what I think happens is you get a very well-known attorney and you think they have connections that they might be able to do this, do this, do this. So I'm not going to speculate anything further from that. I'm not going to say, oh, he, the lawyer wanted to cut a deal and she didn't. And I'm not saying that at all. All I'm telling you is that this was her decision and there will be a replacement soon. And you see what happens. Now, a few of you asked me to find out about the OnlyFans controversy over the last couple of weeks. And I'm going to give it to you right here. No one else is going to report it because they don't want to give the La Nostra Familia, all of you and us, credit for it. The reason why that OnlyFans account appeared again is because the lawyers involved is going to be a crazy amount of money. And any money that can be generated to pay for these lawyers, if it can be legally done, it will. Is there going to be another OnlyFans account launched with Tammy Sitch footage? Yeah, it could very well. Could absolutely very well. Um, as I joked last week, and no, I will not spread my legs again, but for the people out there that actually thought Tammy Sitch relaunched the page from her jail cell, I mean, I know she has computer access, but I refuse to do again what I did last week. There ain't no way that she's lounging back in the jail cell and say, look, everybody, I'm going to play with my paper toilet holder. It, no, she's not doing this from a jail cell. So this is archived footage that she is authorizing someone else to launch. Remember, when you launch an OnlyFans, you're not required to do live stream. You're not required to show current footage. You could show shit from five, ten years ago if you want. If somebody wants to pay to see it, they'll pay to see it. It's immoral, in, in my opinion, and this is just me. This is just me expressing this, in my opinion. When there is a civil lawsuit going on, I don't know if someone should be able to raise funds in that type of way. To me, it's almost like writing a book. Like if, Now, the lawsuit hasn't happened yet, the civil lawsuit. So, you know, once it's determined, it's like writing a book. If you can't make any money off of writing a book, you should not be able to make money off of videos or an OnlyFans. So, I don't know. Benjamin, if they allowed that in jail, I guarantee you there would be a website that would be like oh you know, like OnlyFans the jailhouse edition. That you'd have I guarantee you if they had OnlyFans allowed in jail, we would have people that are usually jail cells have two people in there. I guarantee you would have Beth and Leanne that are just jail cell inmates. Beth and Leanne, two women, two heterosexual women, 25 years to life faced with a dilemma and they look at each other and they look down and $9.99 a month to see what happens. You don't think we would have saw that by now? Or, hey, it could be Miguel and John. I don't care. Ah, shout out to Chaos. He is a retired corrections officer. Not only is he a wrestling legend, he is a retired corrections officer, 25 years. And by the way, 
for everyone out there that likes to take shots at my YouTube chat room, um, chaos, Austin Nance, I'm not trying to diminish Austin Nance. He's good people. But chaos is a wrestling hall of famer here in the Northeast and is a retired correction officer and is so well liked amongst his peers and has wrestled countless hall of famers. And I'm not talking about the, the, Zim, the, the, the uh, Austin, Indiana wrestling hall of fame. I'm talking about legit WWE hall of famers. This guy does a damn good job moderating this page, and this is a fun, good environment. And for people out there to keep throwing shade, you know, you obviously do not frequent this channel. This channel is about having fun, uh, it, just escaping from the all the bullshit going on in this world. Now the controversy with Roe v. Wade. You know, I want everybody here to have a good time and laugh. Not sit here and just get angry and yell and scream and curse at the world. So, you know, shout out to Chaos and Austin Nance. They do a damn good job here. They're very well respected. So, um, and that's not a shot to anybody individually. But, you know, that's one of the reasons why I held off from starting on YouTube many years ago. Oh, it's you, YouTube is toxic. Got news for you. I think YouTube is probably the least toxic. Compared to Twitter and Facebook, maybe Instagram is the least toxic. But here, pretty fun environment. All right. I know we're starting to get a little late. I got to share something with you. And again, if I end up wrong, I will sincerely apologize to PW Insider, 411 Wrestling, Gerwick.net, and others. But you know me. I do my research before I bring stuff on this show. And what I have found, in my opinion, is that all those websites and many others, e-wrestling news and others, they are clickbaiting you right now. And I believe that some of them are intentionally clickbaiting you. They're lying to you. And they're using the WWE investigation, and I'm going to prove it to you right now. I'm going to try to make this as simple as I can. But I want you, for everybody on video, I want you to look at the screen. And I'm going to show you some stuff right now. For everybody on audio only, you will not get lost in this. But I want everyone to remember this phrase. KSF's investigation is focusing on whether WWE officers and or directors breached their fiduciary duties to the company shareholders or otherwise violated state or federal laws. I want you to remember that, say, that phrase. You don't have to memorize it now, but you have an idea of what that phrase says. Okay? All right. I want you to think about that for a minute. Now, a whole bunch of wrestling websites are reporting this. And I'm sorry if the print is small. I'm sorry if there's pop-up ads. These are these fucking websites. It's not my fault. But even if you're on like a smartphone, don't worry. I will read it to you. This is live right now on PW Insider. Okay, you can see, look, there's still the pop-ups and everything. This was printed June 24th, yesterday. And it talks about former Louisiana attorney, law firm, the latest to launch an investigation with WWE. Now, you look at the middle. I just highlighted something. And the middle has a phrase that says, KSF's investigation is focusing on whether WWE officers and or directors breached their fiduciary duties to the company shareholders or otherwise violated state or federal laws. Okay, okay. Same phrase, right? Now, I want you, let's, let's go here. You look on the top, I took that exact phrase and do a Google search. These websites pop up. Some wrestling, some not, mostly cut and paste. Comicbook.com, yeah, that's the same website. Remember, 
That guy, what was his name? Brian Jones from a couple of weeks ago. Exclusive. We know why T Sasha and Naomi, what their future is. And they didn't know nothing. All right, so you see these websites. Okay, they're all looking it up. All right, now, here's where we have fun. I go down and I'm looking at these websites and I'm clicking on random ones. And as I'm scrolling down, I find this one. See what I highlighted? PRNnewswire.com. Look at the date of this article. September 11th, 2020. Okay, let's click on it. Here you go. This is an article written in September of 2020 talking about an investigation with WWE. Scroll down to the middle, and it says, and I quote, KSF's, KSF's investigation is focusing on whether WWE officers and or directors breached their fiduciary duties to WWE shareholders or otherwise violated state or federal laws. Okay, let's go back to PW Insider. Same exact phrase, word for word. Okay, this is a story from September of 2020. Now, Brandon Thurston, who I really appreciate who does hard work. This story was brought to him. Brandon Thurston went on Twitter and said, guys, the story that's floating around is based on a two-year-old press release that is now settled. It was a class action lawsuit. It's been settled with WWE. If you look at the top of this screenshot from Brandon Thurston's Twitter, the person who originally tweeted that deleted it. Good, good. It was not a valid story, okay? So these websites are reporting a story from 2020, and, and I'll show you where the deception is, and it's awful. And a lot of these websites, the wrestling news websites, a lot of them pulled their article. Some doubled down on it. Wait till I show you. Let's go to bodyslam.net might have deleted it. No, they did not. Okay, look at bodyslam.net. Hold on, let me pull it up. This is bodyslam.net. This article is from yesterday. Yeah, hey, look, it's from today, June 25th. See the date I highlighted? Let's go down to the bottom. KSF's inquiry is centered on determining if WWE officers and or directors violated state or federal laws and their fiduciary obligations to the company's shareholders. Do you see what all these people did? Look what they did. They added, this is PW Insider. They added June 17th's paragraph when WWE was being investigated because of Vince McMahon's $3 million payoff. They took that paragraph that has nothing to do with Khan, Swick, and Fody's lawsuit from 2020 that has been settled dead, and they took the current investigation, added it to a 2020 press release, and are trying to put it off as news. If you actually read this, if you read this, this first paragraph right here, former Attorney General Louisiana Charles Fody is a partner of the firm and, and, and investigating WWE. That paragraph is from 2020. This paragraph here is from 2020. PW Insider took this paragraph and put it in the middle. That's what they're doing to you right now. They're not the only ones. Look at this website, 411 Mania. We can add another law firm to those investigating WWE for possible breach of fiduciary duties. All right, you go down here. Here's the press release. Look, they deleted the September 11, 2020 date on it. Go back. Look. Look at this first paragraph. Look at this. And look at this. Please. If you, if for all my audio only friends out there, if you ever wanted to see an example of this, look at this. I'm going to highlight three things right now. Look, 
This is the September 11th press release. This is the first paragraph in that press release. This is the first paragraph in this article from bodyslam.net. This is the first paragraph in the article of PW Insider. This is the first paragraph in 411 Mania. This is the exact paragraph from 2020. What they did was they took this paragraph and put it in the middle. All to get a fucking hand job and clickbait all of you. Every one of those websites, and there are many others, just Google that phrase. How do you like that, everybody? No one is addressing them. This is why we get no love or anything from any, any support from anybody out there. Prove me wrong. How do you like that as blatant clickbait? Some of these websites you pay money to. Some of these, what, give credit to Fightful. I know some of you don't like some of those people at Fightful, and way back when I used to criticize them, I don't do it anymore, but they do their diligence also. Look at all these other websites that doubled down, deleted the 2020 date, and put current shit in the middle. And then you have everybody picking up on it. Look, this cut and paste everywhere. I mean, I didn't even show you others. This is the Gurick one, and the Gurick one disappoints me the most. The Gurick one pisses me off the most because Steve Gurick, I know him for 25 years, and this guy, James Walsh, is some of the most awful writing on the net. Look, here's your first paragraph. I just highlighted it. Here's the third paragraph. These are from 2020, and then they took this bullshit and smacked it in the middle. Every single one of these sites are clickbaiting you right now for hits. I won't do that to all of you. And I'll never be accused of doing that to all of you. I mean, but, you know, I'm starting to realize more and more, even some of my friends in the podcasting world will use words that are completely false because you all keep tuning in with all due respect. And you know what? Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. And if you keep getting fooled, if you keep going back to those same news sources that I showed you now, and you want to give them legitimacy, you deserve to be jerked off. You could deserve to be clickbaited. You deserve to be lied to. So I just showed you firsthand. Brandon Thurston, I give him credit. He picked up on it. He's like, guys, this is 2020. The original article, it's got the, everybody deleted the date so they could post it anyway. Some websites, I give them credit for pulling the story. Some others doubled down. It's not detective work, so fly. I appreciate that. But this is, again, the difference. And sure, you know, we lose viewers because of it. We don't gain viewers or listeners because of it. But I want you to be fully aware that when we've been talking about this for a long time, you know, it's not easy to get a really good example like that, but it happens all the time. The sausage that is being made, I mean, that is easy to show you. But that, that's awful. That is fucking awful. Because I just personally feel if people are going to take the time, and, and look, I didn't even show you any podcasters. Go on YouTube and look at all the podcasters that have this as their front page story. Now, to their defense, they might be just pulling it from these websites. I wouldn't be surprised if Cornette talks about it because he doesn't know that it's a two-year-old story because he's going to websites that he trusts, just like some others, and they're seeing it be reported, so he, they believe that what's being reported is honest. But here you see it straight from PW Insider. I mean, they're not, they don't do that often. But you see the chain reaction you cause. Is that intentional, everyone? I think when you delete the date and then you put it smack, that's not a press release, everybody. If that law firm put the current 
paragraph between two old things, that's different. There is no press release from that law firm. And, but that law firm, sooner or later, I think they'll go out public and say, no, we didn't put this out there. And then they'll just quietly delete it. All right. Get into some quick questions. Where are we? Hour and 35 minutes? All right. We'll get out of here in about 10 minutes. Ronnie, Tony Khan said in the media scrum that AEW has a drug testing policy. Do I think he got put on his spot and made that claim, or do I think he's full of it? I did not tune into the media scrum. To me, it is more of a media party. You know, a lot of people, you know, some of them pose good questions. Some of them, it's just, you know, about trying to rub elbows. But here's my honest take on this. I think Tony Khan knew Jeff Hardy was going to be a topic of discussion. And Tony Khan is not a stupid man. I think when it comes to wellness and abuse, it's not just alcohol, it's drugs. Not saying that for Jeff Hardy. But I personally think Tony Khan knew that sooner or later, wellness policy, drug testing would come up. So I think Tony Khan was very prepared to answer this. And I do believe Tony Khan when he says that they do testing. However, they do not do testing the way uh, like WWE does or publicly traded companies and some other companies do. It's not that every month everybody in AEW gets tested, you know, and AEW picks up the tab for it. What'll happen in AEW, and you know what? There's nothing wrong with this. It may not be to your standards, but there's nothing wrong with this. If AEW thinks that someone may be using and might be on something, whether they're there live or something, you know, you can't just accuse people. It's got to be more than that. But if they suspect that someone might be under the influence or might be taking, then I could see where he will require the person to be tested. But understand, as a private company, he does not have to do that. And yes, you can be lied to. I mean, that's just a fact. Take note that no wrestlers came forward and said, look, you know, for everyone out there, it's given Tony Khan a bunch of shit about this drug testing question. I've been tested in AEW. I've been tested nu numerous times in AEW. Let's see if any wrestlers come forward and say that. Now, this scrum just happened, and they're preparing for Forbidden Door. So don't expect anybody to come out immediately. But if you don't see anybody coming out, period, and saying, yeah, I've been tested numerous times, I would think upon employment, you have to show evidence that you're clear. I mean, you get hired in a bank, you get hired in a lot of jobs. One of the requirements is you have to show a clean drug test upon your hiring. There was some controversy years back that in order to get unemployment, you had to show proof that you were clean, not on uh, uh, something other than what you're prescribed for. So I could see upon hiring, I believe everybody there was tested. Once you're in that company, though, if you don't show any signs and there's no concrete suspicion, he doesn't have to test anybody. So that's, that's my thoughts on it. I don't think he's BSing anybody. Chris Kutcher, this pay-per-view looks like a weird buffet. Some stuff looks good, but, many, but there's too many selections. Nobody wants to tell me exactly what I'm eating. Any update on Ricochet? because he was killed yesterday. Um, I have a feeling Ricochet is going to go back to NXT. Maybe he goes there for a couple of weeks. Um, you know, we got the draft later on this year. I don't think Ricochet is going to be released. He is one of the most talented wrestlers on that roster. But you know what? Give me Ricochet versus Carmelo Hayes. Give me Ricochet versus... Uh, who's, who's the... Oh, uh, crap. Who's the guy that just came in? Crap, that just...
came in from overseas that debuted a couple of weeks ago. Oh, someone in the chat room bailed me out. That guy is incredible. Not Apollo Cruz. Apollo Cruz has been there for years. Who's who's the the, the shorter guy? So it looks like Brian Kendrick. Nathan Carter, is that it? Why does that not sound right? Nathan Carter? Nathan Frazier. That sounds right. Thank you, SoFly. Nathan Frazier. Nathan Frazier versus Ricochet will be off the freaking charts. That would be incredible. So maybe Ricochet goes to NXT for a little while. Um, I looked at yesterday as one match. Look, everybody has a bad match. Everybody could get squashed. I think Ricochet's title reign was very underwhelming. And I don't like Ricochet being buried, but I also like Gunther being pushed as a maniac, as unstoppable force. Right now, I think Gunther dominating is more important than Ricochet getting squashed. Just being honest, in my opinion. But as far as the pay-per-view, yeah, it's a mess. It's a hot mess. For a niche audience... This is a lot of fantasy matches, a lot of wrestlers that they would love to see. Look, if I told you right now that WWE was going to do an event and you could bring 20 people outside of WWE and AEW, you could choose anywhere, Impact, MLW, Indies, this and that, you know, you go down the line, you probably could come up with 20 strong names and it would be incredible. So I like the working relationship, but to have it totally take over TV, I thought was a bit much, but I don't think it damages their product. Um, I still think Rampage needs to be moved to 7 p.m. But again, I'll be honest with you. If I was not doing shows, I would not be watching Forbidden Door tomorrow. I would not be watching it. And I'm not going to drain myself physically and mentally over this event. And I'm not going to lie, too. Wednesday's show that I did with predictions was one of the lowest viewed and tuned into on the audio side shows that I've done all year. Because the majority of fans out there have no interest in New Japan. Again, you looked at those ratings on Access. New Japan is available on cable TV week after week in the States. They got zero bump from this. Their ratings have gone down. They can't even break 50,000 viewers. You mean to tell me one fifteenth of AEW's audience can't tune in to New Japan? One fifteenth. We're not saying a third. We're not saying a fourth. One tenth. If one tenth of AEW's fans would tune into New Japan a couple of weeks, they go over 100,000 viewers like that. What does that tell you? What does that tell you? Jay Carlos. We all love you too, DT. You will get healthy. We all wish you the best. I don't want, I appreciate that. I mean, I don't want anybody to give me sympathy. I mean, you know, I'm dealing with this annoying shit. I look at it more as annoying. Um, for those that don't know, uh, it, right after my wedding, the end of September, I'm getting radiation seeds implanted in me for this prostate issue. You know, uh, I think some people were confused. You know, when I said that the Gleason number was not high enough that I had to get surgery, but getting radiation, you don't get radi you don't get 50 to a hundred radiation seeds put in you because I'm trying to be the LA beast. Have a good day. And say, hey, you know, instead of me eating 10 pounds of butter, let me have 80 radiation seeds in me and see how I react to it. They're getting put in there because I got a problem. But thank God the problem is not as serious to the point where it's irreparable, you know. And then some people who wish my demise, you know, may get it. No, it's a bump in the road. But it's not going to sway me here. We'll be good, man. We'll be good. And as somebody said to me that the seeds are better than the surgery because someone knows someone who had the surgery and they said um, having sex afterwards is like having sex with a rope. It's like playing baseball with a rope. Just picture that visual. Get a piece of rope. Hey, throw the ball. Try to hit a ball with a rope. 
That's a visual, man. That's a visual. It's a good visual. Guardian of Chaos. Ah, thank you very much, my friend. I compliment you because I mean it, and I appreciate everything you do more than you can imagine. And, you know, it is, you're very well respected over here. And, you know, I see when good things happen to this channel and good things happen to some of you out there, should be all of you. But when I see that fun vibe, I see that more and more people try to shoot it down. I mean, I thought this was so freaking cool today. I took a screenshot of it. Somebody pointed out to me that, hey, DT, on the What's Hot on Pro Wrestling TV, I actually made it. That my, my shows over there are now hitting the wall. I don't think that's being done to try to make me feel better. I think that's all based on stats. I put it online and nothing. Nothing whatsoever. You know, it is what it is. But like I said, as long as you all are having a good time and I get great feedback and I see those emojis with the smiles and the laughter and you hit the like buttons if you enjoy it, post a comment, let other people know about the channel, you know, super chats, regular chats, you know, it's all of it. it just gives me more reason why to be here and do this. So thank you for that. I appreciate that. Um, Cappy Caveman. Did I watch the new Beavis and Bloodhead yet? movie yet? No. Soon as I get this show online, I'm going to make myself some late dinner, and I am watching it tonight. There's no, I am watching it tonight. I have it set, ready to go. I am watching it tonight. John Danley says the movie is fantastic. Like I said, if you look in the background, I don't know if you could see them. Right above Macho Man, if you could see that, I know it's a little bit not as dark there. Yeah, look, see? Beavis and Butthead are in the back. Because when I set up, I just wanted to put like some things that I like in the back, some wrestlers, and, you know. Uh, Chaos is asking me any interest on in the new Elvis flick with Tom Hanks? I was never really a big-time Elvis fan. I probably will tune into it, you know, to see what twist they go with. I mean, um, yeah, I'll probably watch it. I know my mother's definitely watching it. But, uh, you know, I like Tom Hanks overall. I mean, I know he has some different political views and everything. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I expect to see that. Sure, absolutely. All right, let's take a couple of questions. We're at an hour and 48 minutes. So you know what? Let's do like nine or 10 more minutes. We'll finish right at the two-hour mark. I don't expect the Forbidden Door recap to knock it out of the park with numbers. but um, So this show will probably be the one that people will reflect on during the week. Thoughts on the 15-year anniversary of the Benoit tragedy? Same way I felt the night that we did that podcast. Um, it was a surreal night. We thought it was a triple murder, and it ended up being a murder-suicide. Uh, it's there's nothing that has changed since then. It's just surreal to go back and witness it in real time. I still feel that Chris Benoit should never be put into any Hall of Fame. Um, I know as years go by, people get a little bit detached from the actual story. And it's, I just, you know, it's a shame. And I do believe that concussions and steroids and everything else played a huge factor in this. And it's a tragedy. It's a tragedy. And it sucks that it happened. It's just, it's a really wild, so surreal moment that never go away, never go away. You know, recording that podcast that night was just something that I can't even describe. You open up the show paying tribute. By the end of the show, you're spitting on him. So, Sam, do I think Forbidden Door is a success? Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. I, I look at it as a success. 
because let me tell you something, and I'm being absolutely sincere. This is a pay. This is one of those like it's a pay per view. It's a feud that we didn't ask for. But New Japan, and I've said this before, New Japan really wants a bigger footprint in the United States. They want to get bigger. They want their name to expand. This helps them big time. There are some Japanese names that I've only heard of before that I am now seeing. There's going to be some names when they pop up on Impact and they pop up on MLW and they pop up on GCW and they pop up in other places. I will recognize them. So some names will be more known to the casual wrestling fan than before. That is a success for them. For AEW, AEW fans that want to see their favorites wrestle, they're going to get some good fucking matches in return. So, yeah, you will see some names taking on some of your favorites that you're not used to seeing or may not even know who they are. But you're going to get some damn good matches in return. So the core AEW fans will enjoy this. Uh, but I also believe they should have waited a week for Blood and Guts. I think that was a huge mistake on AEW's part. Blood and Guts is just, to me, there's no emotional tie to it. That's why I think the Daniel Garcia twist is more needed than Gargano's on the Blackpool or you know, Cesaro. Okay, that's fun, but you know, it's like after Wednesday and then what? So, um, so fly. Can I do a show with chaos just to chat and share some wrestling stories? Yeah, we could do that in the near future. Sure. Um, maybe we do like, uh, maybe like a special Thursday cause Thursdays. Now I spend it with family. I don't have cameras set up there yet, but I do have equipment set up. I do have a camera somewhere that I'm supposed to bring over there. I don't know where it is, but yeah. Even if I'm on location, just to do a down there. Look, a lot of you know that I'm a fan of a channel called Lamont at large. He does like, you know, a lot of cemetery stuff, but he's a big time wrestling fan. He visits the graves of all the wrestlers, tells some great stories, and he's overall appears to be a good guy. But sometimes he's just sitting in his van at night on YouTube live, just chatting. Just chatting. So when we were doing just chat stuff, yeah. Yeah, we could do something in the near future. Sure. Absolutely. Yes, Ramsfin, I know. the per That's what I'm saying. The person re replacing Brian Danielson would also be in blood and guts. That's my point. If Cesaro or, or Gargano are in blood and guts, okay, it's fun for that night. And then what? And then what? I just feel that having another young star along with Yuta is better because you got Moxley, you got Danielson. Regal doesn't wrestle, but you got Regal. Then you may have Gargano or Cesaro, and then you got Yuta. I think you have a nice combination of two veterans and two younger stars. That's why I would choose that. But Blood and Guts is the reason it's okay not to buy Forbidden Door. Blood and Guts is not a pay-per-view. I mean, there's going to be some good matches, no question. But as I showed you before, it's I already shut the page down, but it's not something, you know, that's, do a Google search. You'll see exactly what I'm talking about. It's, it's horrendous this year that they did that build that way. By the way, I want to show you something. You know, we were talking about anniversaries. John Cena, 20 years this Monday. Rey Mysterio, 20 years in a month from now. Yesterday was the, what, 28-year anniversary? 28-year anniversary that the Sega CD, Sega, Sega CD, came out with WWF Rage 
in the cage. That sounds like a Tony Khan. Hey, everybody, tickets go on sale Friday for Rage in a Cage. Beer by the pier. Quake by the lake. This was a video game that I liked. I think it's an underrated hit. Sega CD, 1994. Rage in the Cage. You had the Nasty Boys, Lex Luger, the Macho Man, Diesel, Tatanka, Bret Hart, Mr. Perfect, Crush, Yokozuna, IRS, Kamala, The Undertaker, Shawn Michaels, Rick, the model, Martell. Bam Bam Bigelow, God rest his soul. Several people, God rest their soul. I think we had the head shrinkers in there. This was an underrated game. Unfortunately, though, Sega CD, man. I told you, you know, I've said this before. We have, all of us have those moments that you remember where you were, what you were doing when certain things happen. It's usually tragedy. For some reason, to this day, I still remember the day that I brought home that Sega CD, Marky Mark, like create your rap video or whatever, create your video. I remember I, it was a Saturday night, came out, I came home and put it in there. And for some reason, for about six hours, I'm trying to create music videos. And I'm like, oh, this is the coolest thing. And I fucking despised Marky Mark. And the Funky Bunch, Sega CD. I remember we played, what, the Dallas Cowboys versus the San Francisco 49ers, and you would hit like a play, and it'd show you a video clip. The problem was, after about an hour, it would show the same clip like 10 times. You have some schmuck from the 49ers running with the ball. Get it? It's like, come on, don't show me this damn thing again. It was a good concept, but WWF Rage in the Cage is one of my fondest memories of Sega CD. That was a good game, man. If you have an emulator, even if you don't play too many of the older games on the emulator, if you have Sega CD on your emulator, try Rage in the Cage. I honestly think you'll like it. So, all right, everybody. With that said, I'm going to get out of here. VJ, yes, AEW will break out. In a, they're not in the niche market. They're not in a niche market. Just because their viewership is less than WWE does not make them niche. Forbidden Door is niche. AEW's regular product is not. Um, Force in the Ring of Honor is niche. But overall, you know, Tony Khan will figure it out, I think. So anyway, I'm out of here. Everyone enjoy tonight. If you enjoyed tonight's show, I would really appreciate it. Post a comment. Hit the like. Tell your friends, don't be afraid. You could plug the channel, the shows on social media. And if somebody tells you, fuck you, I hate that guy, that means they're probably a closet fan or they can't accept the fact that, you know, we got something nice going over here and they probably like somebody even better and they don't want to see us ruffle their feathers. We're not here to ruffle anybody's feathers. We're not here to take away anybody's listeners or viewers. We're here because I don't know when to fucking stop. 25 years doing this. Should have stopped this a long time ago. But I'm still having a blast. I hope you're having a blast. Hope everybody's having a nice weekend. And as you noticed, I did not talk about Roe v. Wade. I will be more than happy to give you a couple of thoughts on Monday's show. But I promised everyone tonight. We're going to hold off on that discussion. We'll get into a few comments on Monday because I saw Becky Lynch was called out on some stuff, which I thought was awful. You know, my views about abortion are pretty clear. And, um, you know, but I will leave you with this teaser. I don't think Roe v. Wade should have been overturned. But I also believe that there should be some specific guidelines about abortions, and you can't just pull it away from certain states. It's complicated. But I do believe that, you know, I, we'll talk about it Monday. Too difficult tonight. Good night, everybody. As far back as I can remember, I always wanted to be a podcaster. 
For me to live any other way was nuts. To me, those goody-good people who work shitty jobs for bum paychecks and took the subway to work every day and worried about their bills were dead. I mean, they were suckers. They had no balls. If I wanted something, I just took it. I ran everything. I paid the bills. I paid the hosts. I even paid the masked maniac. Everybody had their hands out. Everything was for the taking. We always called each other good fellas. You would always hear from somebody. You're gonna like Don Tony. He's all right. He's a good fella. He's one of us. But if you're part of my crew, nobody ever tells you they're gonna get rid of you. It doesn't happen that way. There weren't any arguments or curses like in the movies. See, your haters come with smiles. They come as your friends, the people who've claimed they care the most for your life. And now, now that's all over. And that's the best part. Today everything is different. There's lots of action. I don't have to wait around for everything like everyone else. Oh, I didn't get the vaccine? Fuck you, vaccine me. Oh, your delivery guy has COVID? Fuck you, feed me. Right after I moved here, I ordered egg noodles and ketchup. And I got spaghetti with meat sauce. I'm no longer an average nobody, while they get to live the rest of their lives like a bunch of schnooks.